He was not a university man. He, he came up from the lower middle class, rather tragic childhood, was an apprentice in film, and worked his way up to assistant director and eventually uh, director. Dearden is not easily classified in terms of style. So that's probably one of the reasons that most people don't know about him and the fact that he died on the cusp of the great opening of film to uh, social issues and popular culture. Uh, to the extent that there is a Dearden touch, it is the cycle of films that he did in the late 50s and early 60s that are generally known as social problem films. This is one of these films. He also did a film on miscegenation and uh, capital punishment. Social problem films are films that are loosely defined by uh, critics after the fact. In, that were uh, filmed in the late 40s, early 50s, and very early 60s in America and England that would combine melodrama with the subject juvenile, of uh, social import, juvenile delinquency, prostitution, the death penalty. But probably of all of the risque and hottest topics, certainly homosexuality was far away on the chart as one that directors would be weary of engaging, number one, because of the unsureness of whether there'd be a commercial success, and more importantly, because of the censors. In England, as in the United States, films were censored. That is, if a film wanted to get a commercial uh, booking and licensing, it had to go before a board of censors who would look at it for sexual content. Now in England, it was an official censor who was uh, a product of the government. In the United States, it was self-censorship by the film industry in order to not get the government to censor films. So this certainly was a challenge for Dearden and his writers in putting this film together. The timing in 1961 is I think deliberate and not entirely fortuitous, because England had a great raging debate about whether or not homosexuality in private should be decriminalized. As in the United States as well, homosexual conduct, behavior, was criminalized by the law, including uh, private acts. And in England, it had become a much greater front page in tabloid debate because the English tabloid tradition and the um, scandalous of the pre murdochian papers was such that it was rather difficult for any famous figure in government or the arts or politics to remain uh, cloistered once he had been arrested or been accused of a homosexual act. So for example, several years before the film, the great Shakespearean actor John Gielgud had been arrested for approaching an undercover detective in a bathroom stall in uh, London and had been uh, publicly humiliated and uh, lost a tour to America for the uh, crime of, of committing a, a solicitation for homosexual purposes. However, in England, unlike the United States, by 1961, the debate had taken on a more serious purpose. Beginning in 1957, under the last government of uh, Winston Churchill, Churchill had commissioned a, an official investigation commission called the Wolfenden Commission to do a study of the state of homosexuality and culture and the law in uh, English society. Wolfenden was a re respected conservative retired academic. And the commission had secret hearings, it had open hearings, 
most every social scientist, lawyer, theologian testified before the commission. And by the time the official report came out in 1961, the recommendation was that um, private consensual acts of adults, males, would be, should be decriminalized under the laws of England. But by the time the film had, uh, would premiere, it was still an open question as to when that would take place. So this film was very much seen as part of that debate in terms of which direction the law was going to direct itself. Many critics retrospectively see the journey to decriminalization as being inevitable. But if you really look at the politics of the 60s, it's far from sure. And what this film does, perhaps more effectively, I would argue, than any commercial film, either English or American, it illustrates the parameters of the debate by combining a police procedural melodrama with very important, uh, I would use the word didactic in the best sense of the term, different viewpoints that existed in English society about the um, likelihood and, and the question of whether it was a progressive uh, change that the law should attend to. Now, you'll see uh, that the main character in this film, who uh, gives an extraordinary performance, is an actor named Dirk Bogart. Bogart is playing the main character who is a English barrister, which in our parlance he's a criminal trial attorney. And in England, it's a much more hierarchical system. The barristers are a special breed, a special class. They're the only ones who can argue cases in court. They have special training as opposed to other lawyers or solicitors. So it is then and now a quite prestigious position. And within the barrister class, there's a sort of junior barristers. And then the creme de la creme, to mix my uh, linguistic metaphors, is the Queen's Council, the QCs. They are the highest ranking elite barristers who, if they perform well, might get silk, which is a, a, a euphemism for becoming good judges. So this is the way a very upwardly mobile uh, thing. Uh, Dirk Bogart was a magnetic, magnetic rather, and a brilliant actor who was at the peak of his career when this film began. Interestingly enough, uh, Bogart, who began his uh, late adolescent roles in the 1940s after the war, which he served distinguishedly in British intelligence, and in combat, I might add, was uh, a teenage matinee idol who was sort of a combination of James Dean with brains, you might say. And so, he was a Bobby Sox hero with tremendous appeal and sex appeal to female fans. So needless to say, in 1961, doing this, shall we say, crossover role was seen by many as a very risky proposition. Bogart, once he was given the opportunity, leaped at it because upon reading the script, he immediately realized its importance and value to society. He did it for various reasons. First, because it was a meaty role and he wanted to elevate himself beyond the adolescent uh, and comic roles that he did up until that point. Secondly, as a liberal Brit, he was in favor of the uh, decriminalization of the laws. But unknown to the general British public then, Bogart was gay. And so uh, inevitably, certain 